a lop a joero senyon odako lalero asibye mukachiko ka parliament akebya mateka akubago ali alum eri okulonda lead opposition lop chaba koze ngoko bana pirandoza katugende tutandikirewo olabe omwana tu joero senyon as you have said we were able to agree on uh, a time conducive enough for all of us when i first got um, a letter from you it was in the evening of 2nd October, inviting me to come the following day in the morning. I wrote what seemed like a protest letter, <laughs> but it was important that I respond. Uh, it's good manners. When you get a letter, you respond. But within my letter, I'm sure you saw I was disconcerted that uh, I was ambushed because I wasn't given adequate time, just a few hours, to come. And I thought the speed at which this matter was being handled, supersonic speed was, was a bit concerning, and all of that I indicated in my letter. But I'm glad you replied to those my concerns, and we were able to reschedule this meeting so that we can share our thoughts on this proposed amendment. Uh, Honorable Chair, I've shared uh, a brief that I put together with uh, colleagues, which will permit me to read quickly, and uh, we see how things go. I'm going to request that uh, these eats are taken from in front of me so that I concentrate. Please, please, okay. eh? but you'll need water. You, you know people out there, I, I've been seeing on social media people raising concerns that uh, in committee meetings we only eat, and there's too much food. But um, I guess it's okay for colleagues to have breakfast. Yeah, and, uh, and also we stay here from morning to afternoon. Actually, yesterday I had a stakeholder who attended the meeting from Ukoli North. So I asked him, because we were here from 9 a.m. to around 4. So after I asked him now, does it justify that we must have something to eat? And he said, I think he's correct. Because we, we, we can't stay without food the whole day. Actually, others were more concerned about the, the type of food you're eating and whether it's good for your health. But that's on a lighter note. Um, Honorable Chair and Members, on the 1st October 2024, the Administration of Parliament Amendment Bill 2024 was tabled and read for the first time. Consequently, it was referred to this Honorable Committee for Further Processing. And uh, I began by highlighting the following days when I got the letter saying, come the following day. So there was a bit of speed there. Anyhow, the position of the leader of the opposition in parliament commenced in Uganda in the year 1958, just by way of background, when the first direct elections in the Legislative Council, LEGCO, were held, where the opposition of leader of opposition was formally created in this institution. Following the overthrow of the Uganda People's Congress in 1985, multi-party dispensation went into abeyance. The political space was suppressed until the early 2000s when the political pressure was exerted to reopen the space for multi-party politics. In the year 2005, a referendum was held and the majority of voters preferred a return to multi-party politics. The 2006 elections were thus the first multi-party elections held, bringing an end to the single-party system that prevailed at the time. Consequently, the office of the leader of the opposition was established in Parliament at the inception of the 8th Parliament, pursuant to the constitutional provisions that restored multi-party politics in Uganda in 2005. The office draws its existence from Article 82A of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, and Part 2A of the Administration of Parliament Amendment Act of 2006. Article 82A of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda of 1995 as amended is to the effect that there shall be a leader of the opposition in Parliament under a multi-party system. Part 2A of the Administration of Parliament Amendment Act of 2006 gives efficacy to Article 82A through sections 6A to 6E, the procedure of coming up with the leader of the opposition and the functions of the same are well provided for. 
Section 6E of the Administration of Parliament Act stipulates the role and functions of the leader of the opposition and with specificity. Section 2 states that the leader of the opposition shall under subsection 1 in consultation with his or her party leadership appoint a shadow cabinet from members of the opposition in parliament with portfolios and functions that correspond to those in the government cabinet. The object of this bill is to amend the Administration of Parliament Act, CAP 272, to provide for the election of the Leader of the Opposition by members of the Opposition in Parliament, to provide for additional grounds upon which the Leader of the Opposition may cease to hold office, to require the Shadow Cabinet to be approved by members of the Opposition in Parliament, to require the Leader of the Opposition to consult opposition political parties represented in Parliament, when appointing chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of the relevant standing committees of parliament and for related matters. Let me talk about the challenges posed by the proposed bill from my standpoint. Election of the leader of the opposition by members of the opposition in parliament has significant implications for a democratic process. While the notion of voting for the LOP may seem, de may seem democratic in theory, it prevent, presents several challenges that could undermine the effectiveness, accountability, and stability of our parliamentary system. Historically, the election of the LOP by the largest party has been a cornerstone of parliamentary democracy, particularly in systems influenced by the Westminster model. This practice ensures that the opposition is credible and representative of a significant portion of the electorate. By shifting to a voting system in the House, Honorable Chair and Members will risk disrupting this established tradition, which has served to maintain a clear and effective opposition that can hold the government accountable. Because even government should be interested in a credible opposition that holds it accountable. Parliament has got two sides, Honorable Chair and Members. The right side of the Speaker and the left side. The right side is led by the leader of government business, who is also the prime minister, while the left side is led by the leader of the opposition. The leader of government business is not elected by MPs on the government side. So why would we be seeking to have the leader on one side elected? Honorable Chair and Members, while the intention behind the proposal to have the shadow cabinet approved by all members of the opposition in parliament may be presented as one that ensures inclusivity, it presents several critical challenges that could undermine the effectiveness, efficacy, accountability, and stability of our parliamentary system and operations. The Shadow Cabinet is a replica of the Government Cabinet, which is appointed by the person announced as winner of an election. The Shadow Cabinet is intended to hold accountable the substantive cabinet ministers. The intention is for the leader of the opposition to have a team that he or she would be comfortable working with, hence the reason for appointing shadow ministers, as opposed to making it a decision of all opposition MPs in parliament. If the government cabinet ministers are not determined by all MPs on the government side, I ask, why then is it necessary for the shadow cabinet to be determined by all opposition MPs? Honorable Chair and Members, the appointment of chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of accountability committees has been a prerogative of the opposition leadership in Parliament without requiring the endorsement of all opposition political parties that are represented in Parliament. This practice was established to ensure effectiveness in holding the government accountable. The same practice applies to chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of all other committees except accountability committees. Honorable Chair and colleague members of Parliament, for information purposes, Parliament has got a total of 28 standing and sectoral committees. However, only four of these 28 committees are led by the opposition. The rest, which is 24, are led by the ruling party. 
The ruling party selects the leaders of the committees under their mandate. That's the 24. Why then would the opposition be deprived of the same practice? What exactly would we be seeking to remedy? Honorable Chair, I saw a belated afterthought of the mover of this bill, saying even the chief opposition whip, whom we call the cow on our end, should be subjected to a determination of all opposition MPs. Again, the opposition side has got the chief opposition whip, and the ruling party side has got the government chief whip, who is also appointed and is a member of cabinet. That's the government cabinet. I ask again, why would we be interested in subjecting one side to a process that the other side is not subjected to, Honorable Chair and Members? Do we want to create a situation of more important and less important positions in this our parliamentary system that is critical and where all these roles are critical? Honorable Chair and Members, Election of the leaders on the opposition side of parliament by members would make the opposition prone to fragmentation. When opposition members in parliament are forced to compete for leadership positions, it can lead to divisions and weaken their collective ability to unite and hold the ruling government accountable. A fragmented opposition is less effective in presenting a united front, which is critical for influencing legislative outcomes and ensuring that diverse viewpoints are presented. Honorable Chair and Members, the mover of this bill says the bill is intended for the good of the opposition. But as I have been observing, all opposition political parties have disregarded this proposed amendment, saying it is not in any way relevant. So I ask, which opposition is the mover of the bill talking about? Honorable Chair and members of this committee, I'm not the first leader of opposition in this parliament, and I will not be the last. So if the mover is targeting the current lope, then he is with all due respect misguided, because I'm not in this office permanently. Tomorrow, it may not be me occupying this office, but it is important that we do not emasculate whoever the occupant of this office is. Honorable Chair, I saw colleagues from the NRM who appeared before this Honorable Committee yesterday, acknowledging that they too could be in the opposition someday. And that is the reality of politics, Honorable colleagues. So let's seek to strengthen as opposed to watering down these different political offices. Conclusively, Honorable Chair and Members, the current legal regime is devoid of any reasonable lacuna that would warrant an amendment. I thank you. Thank you. Of opposition, before seeking leave of Parliament to present the bill, being that you are his leader, I would like that clarification to be drawn if he ever consulted the lead of opposition. Uh, my second question is whether the right Honorable Lop has interacted with the Honorable Umu before this date. Interacting on the bill. Yes, interacting on the bill, on the amendment. And lastly, I would like it to be on record uh, whether the Right Honorable Lop believes that the Honorable Omo bill is actually targeting him as the sitting lead of opposition. Thank you so much, Honorable Chief that uh, he was uncomfortable with the speed at which the bill was moving and he yeah. called it a supersonic speed. Mm -hmm. I want to put it on record that uh, the alleged supersonic speed has since been uh, uh, has since been managed. As you can see we are in the third week of considering the bill so the issue of the supersonic speed does not arise.
we could actually take a month or even two still considering this bill. But the, the issue was just that uh, I used my discretion as chair to decide on which bill to start with because we had the, we have quite a number of bills in the committee. Uh, and I thought the bill was small and I thought it would be disposed of first. But as you can see, it has dragged on and it will continue to drag on. We intend to give stakeholders enough time to, to give in their views. The second one is um, on the issue of the mover targeting uh, the current law. The mover, while presenting this bill to us, actually indicated to us that he, he would want the bill to start in the next term during the 12th parliament. I think that then also allays your fears that the bill is strategically targeting you because he said it here on camera and it's on record. Now, my substantive question is that uh, you complain that uh, the other side, the government side, has no issues relating to elections of the VP or the lead of the government business and the ministers, they are not subjected to elections, but there is surely some processes through which they undergo. The VP is actually approved by the House. There is an approval process in the House. Same with the leader of the opposition, I mean the, the leader of government business, the Prime Minister. They undergo a process of approval, which means they could be rejected by the House in case they, they are not fit. Now, the ministers undergo a vetting process after uh, being appointed. They undergo a vetting process by the Appointments Committee of Parliament, of which the LOP uh, is a member and the other members of the opposition. So now, the other side of the LOP, once the LOP is uh, designated by the party with the greatest numerical strength in the parliament, in the opposition side, there is no requirement for even approval by, by the House. It's just announced, and that is all. It, it looks to me to be a blank check. And yet the LOP is a national leader. LOP is not just uh, localized to the party with the greatest numerical strength in the opposition, or strictly the opposition. LOP is a national office established under Article 82, and I would imagine it would be subjected to some, some checks, some procedure of approving uh, the designated LOP in the House. So without necessarily going into the provisions of the of the bill calling for elections, what would be your take on some processes through which a law should be finally approved in the House? Yes, Secretary. Uh, Chair, I think it was wonderful presentation and the highlighting issues where we are trying to protect the image of the minors and minority in the August House. So, honorable Loop, thank you so much. Uh, okay. I, okay, minority, minority chair. <laughs> minority. <laughs> minority chair. Uh, uh, so, chair, to save the image and the picture of the minority, so we thank you, honorable Loop. We are here to push. Thank you. This debate. I, I happen to not be around for some time, so I will ask questions because I have not known followed whether in the house or in this committee what has been going on. But just to seek clarification, just from, ask you questions that relate from my to brother, the presentation, my yeah. brother Joel. Whether I just think going wrong in my mind. Have you had an opportunity to look at how leaders of opposition and other democracies? Uh, processed in the House, and uh, in your opinion, how contradictory is what we are trying to do with what is happening elsewhere? Number two is, it uh, actually tickled me in the propositions how, how, how the leader of, of opposition is going to, hold, to cease to hold office. I think this is a tradition, a general practice Elsewhere, when you are holding a public office, there must certainly be some provision how you come to cease to hold that office. Is that contradictory to, uh, in your view, to what is going on in this uh, current bill? Lastly, I know multi-party multi democracy hurts, 
but what is your best way how to <coughs> babysit this democracy within the opposition? Because at the end, as you say in your statement, that on page five, a fragmented opposition is less effective in presenting a united front, which is crucial for influencing legislative outcomes, the last paragraph, and ensuring that diverse viewpoints are represented. It was just going on in my mind. I thought competitive elections, even within the opposition, should be a breeding ground for more competent leaders to emerge from among uh, such a team rather than being a weak point. I feel like, isn't your observation going to the fundamentals of the beauty of multi-party democracy to provide for grants for competition and the winner, the best one of you, wins? I thought it was, I don't know what's your opinion on respect to that observation. I thought it was a strength rather than a weakness to provide for competitive processes within you, or, or um, uh, either on this side or the other side, for the best to come out. I want to thank uh, uh, my brother Lop for the submission. I've looked at some good uh, arguments that have been put forward on effectiveness and all those. It's really something which can help us. But I think the prior uh, people had alluded to a fact that it would be an issue for a committee to even sit and consider, but to realize that it is within our power that when such a bill is presented and referred to a committee, we have no mandate other than considering it. But one thing which I want clarity, and this question was, called, was posed by my sister on, on the issue of consultation, whether the mover of the respective uh, bill had consulted. I wanted to find out with certainty, I know Lob is a colleague in the legal fraternity, is it a legal requirement for you to be consulted before you move a private member's bill? Is it a legal requirement? Or this is like an in-house where it is courtesy? Because when I look at Rule 121, a member has a right to move a private member's bill. And reading that rule exhaustively over rules of procedure, it does not put a duty upon a member to have to consult someone whether they should bring that bill. Because he has it is right. But I think now what we are doing here in the committee with this wide consultation is now our input all towards the bill as to whether we agree or disagree. But to castigate a member that he did not consult me before even he moved the bill, I think is not legally supported. I stand to be corrected if, if I'm wrong. Thank you. Questions came from uh, the Honorable Shamim Manende. Did the Honorable Lumu consult my office before moving this bill? Um, with your permission, Chair, I'll tether that to the question of the Honorable Bosco. There is no legal requirement for a member moving a private member's bill to consult anybody or any office. That's why it's called a private member's bill. Yeah. Um, however, usually when uh, somebody is moving a bill on behalf of particular stakeholders, they will consult. I saw him reaching out to political parties in the opposition because he said... He's doing this for the good of the opposition. So I think even though it was not a legal requirement, that's why he moved to different political parties, consulting them. I kept following on the news. Each of the parties that he went to told him not to go ahead with the bill, but he still went ahead anyway, which is his right. Do I think the bill is targeting myself personally? And maybe... I'll tie that in with, uh, because the chairman raised that, but let me first uh, respond to the honorable, honorable vice chairperson who said the SG said, did not say that he would one time be in the opposition. I was very clear in my statement that the NRM delegation that came here did indicate that since the mover is looking at the bill starting next term, they never know they might be on the other side. That was mentioned by Council Barata. Honorable Chair, for information, the committee proceedings are normally aired live. So I was in my office following. 
Uh, I don't know if today they are also, you know, relaying them live, but they are normally live, so people do follow. Um, Honorable Chair, you firstly talked about the supersonic speed. Again, um, the reason I did raise that is because this bill was read for the first time on 1st October. On 2nd October in the evening, I got a letter inviting me on 3rd October in the morning. Maybe if there is a, a better English word than supersonic speed, it can be used. But I chose that word very deliberately in the letter that I wrote to you because it really happens. And as I did see you, Honorable Chair, speaking to the media, I said, yes, there are other bills before the committee, but you said this one is small, so you want to run quickly with it. But I said you were not being fair to us, whom you were inviting, uh, and it's good you responded. Now, the question of, yes, is this targeting myself individually, because you did allude to that. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it most probably is a duck. Honorable Chair, you did uh, ask and mention that the Vice President is approved, the Prime Minister is approved. They are not elected, Honorable Chair, and that's the issue that I've raised in my statement. Yeah, because uh, they are not elected. They are appointed by somebody who is announced winner. And that's why I was asking, why is it seemingly okay to have practice on one side different from the practice on the other side? The Honorable Achia, 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 how are lobes in other democracies created? I have done some establishing, and I'm sure the committee has too. And uh, you will discover that lobes elsewhere, process is similar. The opposition MPs don't sit and elect a leader of the opposition. But we keep learning. Maybe I can be educated about a particular jurisdiction where that happens. I'm open to learning. How the lobe can be removed from office? There is no office in this country for which there is no way somebody can exit office. It is not there. Including even members of parliament, um, because um, the current legal framework is interesting. It provides for how an MP can be recalled, and then at the end, it says this can only happen under the movement system. So, it's one of those redundant legal provisions that we have, yeah? But again, there is a way a member of parliament can cease to be a member of parliament. The leader of the opposition is a member of the commission. There is a very well stipulated modus operandi on how anyone can cease to be a member of the commission. So, to answer you directly, the law is not in office permanently that he or she cannot cease to be in that office, just like any other office in this country. Competitive election uh, should be good for opposition, Honorable Achia says. So why is it not good for the ruling party as well? Because if, as you're saying, it should be good for the opposition to sit and elect their leader of the opposition and elect their chief opposition whip, why is it not good for the NRM from which you come, sir, to sit and elect your government chief whip and elect your leader of government business and elect the committees, committee leaderships, uh, and so on and so forth? It's just a question that I'm throwing back. So, yeah, the modus operandi would be good to cut across. Yes, please. I want, I want to say Please. I am I'm certainly very sure that my colleague quite appreciates a lot. Now, when you look at, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to pick it from your line of argument. It is very true 
that their procedures will follow as per the prescription of the law. If you look at the Prime Minister's situation, this is the same argument we had yesterday. We have no problem when it comes to we say election or something, but whereas we say a particular provision of the Constitution, Constitution is restrictive and says the Prime Minister shall be appointed. But now when we look at our Article 82, which still gives the leeway to Parliament's run administration of Parliament's Act, to be able to set in place that mechanisms. I, you have clearly brought out that there are some legislations which could be redundant. I would also say that when you look at Article 82, we needed to look at what is the intention of the framers of the Constitution. When you look at it, why do you put that duty to give Parliament the discretion? But we are saying now Parliament cannot exercise that discretion to, to see how it is chosen. Because election is one of the modes amidst others. Even you can choose through an appointment, you can choose through all these things. But I think it is something you take it up. Because you may, we may say it is not viable today, but even in the subsequent parliament, somebody will again come up with a similar motion. And it can raise the same issues, isn't it? So I think if we think that this would be redundant, take up an issue and have it amended so that we say, let's appoint. But you don't give parliament the discretion to decide on which mode to choose and you say it cannot. I think that is a problem also we have in the legislation. Thank you. It says there is no, with specificity, a legal provision that says the Prime Minister shall be appointed. No, no, no I said it is there. Come again. The one for the Prime Minister. It says Parliament shall by law prescribe the following in respect of the leader of the opposition. How he or she is chosen. You find that this was another prescription of the law. And we seem to have a challenge with it. The modalities. So if you look at the word chosen, yeah, how he or she is chosen, how he or she ceases to hold office. Now Parliament is saying, how do we choose? Last time when we were interpreting a lot of issues here, we said the election can be one of the ways a law can be chosen. Or he can also be appointed. There are different, under the word chosen, there are different procedures that can be taken. You get it? So you find that when Parliament, uh, not even Parliament, when the mover of this particular thing says, okay, let's operationalize the word chosen and choose which procedure there. I think the issue of the procedure gives us problems, isn't it? That's why we are in this. But if we find that this particular provision also has its challenges, it's one you could propose for an amendment, and we have it also. If it is appointment, we say appoint with clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Council, incidentally, Parliament shall prescribe a mode. Parliament prescribed that mode in the Administration of Parliament Act saying the leader of the opposition shall be elected by the leading opposition party. That's in the law. So there is no lacuna. The constitution says parliament shall prescribe. Parliament actually prescribed. And I was elected by my party with specificity, if you want to know. I was elected by the National Executive Committee of my party. That's the top organ of the party. So I, I don't think there is a gap therein that it's confusing, do you choose or otherwise, the law is very clear. The Administration of Parliament Act shall be elected by the leading opposition party. And that's what happened in my case. That's what happened with my predecessor, speaking for my party, how we do actualize that. I think those are the questions that came through. If I've missed out any, I can be guided, Honorable Chair and Members. Honorable Susan, uh, I just want to talk about something. <clears throat> this area is scientific and constitutional. Uh, you know, the constitution is like a Bible and the Quran. <coughs> I was talking to Honorable Tevandeke. You don't just read it as a, an ordinary love letter. So, specifically, on one point which was raised by the chairman about uh, approval, the other side and uh, maybe our opposition and insisting on designation. It is in the Constitution. The really only one word which you have to look at is the party in the opposition. When you look at the terms and conditions of cabinet, that it was through the constituted assembly. So it was a constitutional process. There are entrenched provisions. Then when we look at the lead of opposition, it, it is clear, and a multi-party dispensation, and the party in opposition. 
meaning the party with the numerical strength. So when you want now to subject the terms and the election process to members of parliament, though you believe it was silent, it was not silent. The prime word was party in opposition. So unless you subject this to a constitutional amendment, you cannot amend an act to operationalize a constitutional provision which is silent. I hope you understand. This is a scientific way of understanding. So basically our hands are tied. Honorable Rumu was supposed to move fast an amendment of the constitution, then you get another act to operationalize. Thank you. It can only be scientific. That, that, the constitution is not just what is written. There is constitutionalism. So I, I don't know whether I, I made the point. Thank you. <coughs> is to give public a good law if we are to give, and to deny the public a bad law if it ever passes through here. The Honorable Yusuf Nswambi elaborately puts it, we must avoid the temptation of using an amendment in an act of parliament to amend the constitution. So that becomes tricky, and um, uh, as a committee on legal, we have that duty to protect and defend the constitution, which we must put on record. But also when we are making a clear analysis of some of these provisions of the law, regard should be given to the fact that many of these laws were promulgated under the movement system. And so a full operationalization of some of them under the multi-party system, specific provisions could have been amended, but there could be so much that remains lacking, which is work in progress. So it is in our best interest that we receive these ideas when they come, like the way the Honorable Yusuf Nswambi has proposed and the leader of opposition on some of these provisions, so that in consideration of a holistic approach of overhaul of some of the existing laws, we put them into consideration. So we should not curtail proposals that come for the good guidance of clean laws, because it is the singular duty of this committee to give the country very good laws by guiding parliament. I thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman. No, has done it on behalf of. <laughs> so one minute. I have a minute. Yeah, Mr. Time. Chairman, sir. Of course, the law under the constitution here, it stipulates well how a leader of opposition should be established uh, in parliament and as by law. But in his communication. Uh, he communicated that uh, uh, he was the law has communication was communicated here that he was elected by, by in his party by probably the central executive committee N national neck uh, I just wanted to understand further how the process was yeah that's it yes. How it was, how it was. Uh, just in addition to what my honorable members have advanced, I just want to bring it to the attention of the committee that being the legal committee that we are, we are supposed to guide parliament on matters of law so that we really produce good laws or the parliament can make good laws. Uh, so my point specifically is on the election of the leader of opposition, as he has rightly put it, that he was elected and approved by NEC uh, at the National Inter Platform. I think the spirit of the law, the spirit of the law was to ensure that the leader of opposition is elected from a party that is, has the highest members of parliament in in parliament or in opposition in parliament and i think the the intention was very clear they would have put it that we should consult other opposition members but because there are issues to do with alliances currently as we speak that if you put the lead of opposition 
being subjected to being elected by all members of the opposition parties, you may find that some opposition members or some opposition parties actually in alliance with the government. So in that line, how is the lead of opposition supposed to keep the government in check with some opposition members who are actually in alliance with the sitting government? Five minutes, Lop, to respond. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I don't know whether it passed that uh, there should be no thinking of people in this committee. I would like to defy you a little bit and thank uh, the Honorable Juliet Lodu for being very smart today. Um, <laughs> um, because today is the only day I've come here and I've seen she's very smart. So I, I want to thank her even though he stopped us from thanking people. But anyway, um, on a serious note, Honorable Chair, yes, Honorable Sanja is um, inquisitive. She is normally smarter, by the way. Ah, okay. Just that I am just glad. I take note of that. It's, it's just that I, I don't usually come to this committee. <laughs> this is the first time. Yes, um, how the neck did... Uh, conduct the election. The National Executive Committee comprises of several members um, who did sit and uh, the, the deputy chairperson is saying he's actually an independent member. Order, order. He's not uh, a member of the party, at least uh, not officially, but he's welcome. Honorable Taylor, you're also welcome through the chair. So, yes, it's... Um, a committee that is comprised of several members, several leaders, and we sit and uh, determine matters on behalf of the party. So when we saw the law saying the leader of the opposition shall be elected by the leading opposition party, our conscription of that was we're not going to call all the members of the party, registered members of the party, to come and elect our wisdom within the law was to go by the top organ of the party, which did carry out that election. And the minutes are available, and, and so on. That's how we have done, with the previous lop, myself, and so on. The Honorable Terra, the Deputy Chairperson, rightly says it's the duty of this committee to guide Parliament and the nation in the quest to have good laws for this country. And that's why I came to this committee. I probably had the choice not to come, or any of the stakeholders you invited. I don't think they were under any compulsion. I've chaired the committee before. There are people who mandatorily, when you invite them, they must come. If they don't, you can summon them. We used to summon and even arrest people and bring them to a committee when I chaired one. But in the case of stakeholders, they come on their own volition because they believe this committee has got a duty. Um, and we believe that that duty ought to be executed efficaciously. And so that's why I came to share my thoughts. I am um, very hopeful that, yes, the committee will capture our thoughts and put them into consideration. Some people might say, but, well, maybe this is just for the motions of it, for a formality and that kind of thing. I want to give the committee the benefit of doubt, and that's why I came to share those my thoughts. I've been seeing other stakeholders that have been coming to the committee sharing their thoughts. I am hopeful that the committee will capture them and uh, share them with the rest of the House so that we are able to run this our country even better than we are. You see, we run this country together. Government and the opposition. There are challenges we are still dealing with politically, but we are all stakeholders and uh, that's why we are here. So I thank you for inviting us, and uh, we wish the committee all the best. Thank you. Okay, so on our way down, this is the Mukachiko, a colleague on Parliamentary Affairs Committee. Um, na soka kwe mulugunya, kubanga, echite so chino, cha soko teke wae mu Parliament. It was first reading, galumu October. Enkera nga bidi October, orwe gulo, nefune barua, okuva Mukachiko, gamampi to kujia enkera nga satu. Ningamba chichicho nusupidi wechikachino 
bafati nyo imazi jensi chedi wo. So, chia paso nwaka chiko ne muwani kila, ne muga sebo. So, okay, dadala. Muleke tuko laku ambush. Mpise lelo lwe gulo, nzije ncha kumacha. Fast reading ya badeo gulo, nga mubuza. Chichi exactly, chiba piao, ebugu muliaji nyo. Nga teba ina nama teka, malala. Gibata na kuwa saganya. Anyway, so ne mba gamba sija kusobola kubela ulu. Nako ulevali banja gala, nga andaba nida. Sicha, sicha abu enkanya. Neba kiliza, ni nzija ulu nako uluwari ilu, nga waiseo, ebanga, ukwede kukulu unji. Eteka, muna fe, honorable umu, liya leta, okusokera dala, liya tembe eta, okusokera dala, ya gama anti, alileta, kuluoblu unji wa opposition. Ne, nebu uzizela ni mukachiko, ya chari da, ebibina bi opposition, ebibi nja ulu. Nga babuza kuteka ino liya tembe eta, liya, liya galo kuleta. Bona ni mamu gambe teka, livi, fu, wefu fululu. Ni ati ya leme lako. Kakati ni tuwebu uza, abantu bo gama anti bo letele teka, bali ganyi, bali govye. Obeda, chino chukubidani, techite gerekeka. Ede bila vye mbuzi za mukachiko, nti bwemba muga amati leader of opposition, akubibweko, akaluru. Mbuli yao techari bade na chivi, njine chief opposition na ya kubibweka akaluru. Mbuli yao techari bade chivi, wachi, mwaga la chikole weku leader of opposition ye ka. Wanga mpala me tuina side zibiri, tuina side ekule mberwa leader of opposition, ne side ekule mberwa leader of government business. Leader of government business, tiba mkuba kwa kaluru. Government chief whip, tiba mkuba kwa kaluru. Ba cabinet minister, aba government, tiba mkuba kwa kaluru. Ba committee chairpersons, kumanga, ena remu side ekule mbera committee za abili munya, fetu kule mbera nyazo ka. Balina bo, tiba mkuba kwa kaluru, kakati, Chicho obo tegeza. Echwe chini tinda abandu kulo oza nti banabandu. Batageti inga senyo nyingo mtu. Kubanga. Luachi. Balibo. Sigalanga po chini tipa kuiwako kalulu. Na ato ya gala saidi eno. E kubibweko. Akalulu. Kwe gamba chile tebibuzo vinji. Elula vila dalanga baina chepakeza ako. Okuwa saganya. E chita tegele kika. Neko mitinga buenji gambie. Nti. Katusubile banauli liza. Endo uza zaba antu, bebe buzi zako. Wanga chino komiti cheko la okuita stakeholders abenja ulo. Okuwe buzi zako, techina kuba just formality. Kuba uliliza, ila benzi zenda banga bo ogeda. Unanga waga manti, mm -hmm. ineteka, siri tufu. Naba NRM, naba la vie, unakulwe gulo. Ila nabu ni waga manti, mm, eteka lino, ligeenda tandika anga bidi abili mukaga. Niba gamba, na uli delo ya wawawe, kanso barata. Na bala baba deunga, waga gamba, nti, mm, bidi habili mukaga. NRM, na yuwe na abeda mupozition. Na bonga bala baba, nti, sawa yona. Lechi ntuchi nzo kujira. Kati nabo, nebati ya muko, neba ganti, mm, e ntubisigalenga wibidi. Echo chukula ganti, chiba chichia mbo kole teka. Ngolikolo wa oino mtu kuo targetinga. Ngo mtu. Kubangu nzo kutargetinga, apali woka akano. Hingida nubinanga goli mupozition. Tuwa vila ba, uwechiti wa mbaba, mamama mbaba zi, yali ku public order management act. Yeke njini, ya soko kulumi wa eteka lino. Bagresi binjira detention without trial. Yeke njini, kwe ya kwa ata. So kati, chikulu netulo oza, netufumitiliza kufintu vino. Oinzo kubanga, senyo nyitu muagala, kubanga abu zebibu uzo vinja, alemera koku, nsongeze nja ulo, sende yomu uomu solo, wano mparlamenti, bitongo vya government, vya nja ulo, na china alemera ko, no gana, senyo nyono, atusumbu wanyo. Katulabe ngeli jetumu chanka na nyamuko. Zisigenda kubeda lido of opposition dubeleda. Sina chenja gala, sina wechi ino kubeda. Tukulukulaba ntui ingido vujinza. Katulia inzo kuloza anti targetinga senyo nyi. Na umu targetinga, encha no vera anga. Gwabade amu targetinga. Goli mchifoche yali yali muatenga yali saidi yali. Oembele upo nujukwa saka. Echiru nji, echiru mu teka lino. Nchibuzi za naba komitinga. Saba na uba mbuli le. Chiru nji chibbo chebalaba. Muteka lino. Kubanga, mkubaga ama teka. Muna mateka ina jia kuga manti, wabobo bage teka, wabango ya gala kulichi usamu. Obo ina cho ya gala kuteleza, echitali chirunji. Kanimba buza, chichamu chiche mgeza ako kuteleza. Tichiji ute chite gerekeka. So, tiwali cho inza gama manti chino chirunji chola ba muteka. Echobo liyao chalibadebo echi chosinga, yalia gama manti, 
abakule mbezebu na mparlamenti balondebwe Lead of opposition, lead of government business, chief opposition whip, government chief whip, shadow cabinet, ne government cabinet, yona, obuchiko bukule mbezebu opposition, no obuchiko bukule mbezebu government, ba commission wabu na, katisinga ya chile tabu hacho. Avoli ya wa mantubali government, ok, mwizo kwa mulimwe chile unji kubanga, Oya galanti abantu banobo nabona balonde we ne wo gamanti atu agalo muntu omuye ka we nonze mu balala kati ekirungi kiba tekitegerekeka so ekintu we kiti kiba obuli ekigera na kunafu ya opposition tudao tuli mu kulwanira bifo atenga banna faba NRM bosi bakola ibyabwe baine ngirinda je babikwasaganya nefe tudao tuli mu kulwanira bifo nachi tuvude mu kalulu ah nze kakati nange ntandisewo ka group akange kubanga oyayisemu oba yanze bana kalulu oba samu wagira abane batandika wakabwe kati obuli takavuyu akateeta agisa so kati twali kirungi kitulaba a uh, ananimanja sebunya mbaka na kasika sento lero tubadde nga opposition to gazene lead of opposition uh, which wa joero senyonyi nga yaiti bwa mukachiko okuwendo woza ye kuteka lyalumu Obeli ya kazi wako ya lumu bilu. Na inge teke liyo walita parliamentary administration uh, amendment bilu bilu ya bilu mwena. Na imu vyo na nze nga nze kuruange ndo uoza nti muamilu mu chala bie ukusinzira uh, bibi ina vyo ufusi vyo na bize ya kachiko uh, publiki walaba nechibi neche nale mchiga mbancha haa kubanga na, na icho Chisoro kere ncha sina kusobola. Wabula chisawa na chisa wanyo na soro kubele anga chichiri kudolu vukanya. So mucho chitegeza nti uh, eteka lino na uvali daba nti echama ze maspite di jide mosi nungi. So nze nga nze mwamiri umu soro kumu wa magezi chiteka lino na aliva kubo. Teka mwe chigele chisoka mazi. Mwola banga mawamvu echoku bito chiteka mu. So wabulo jamu chije. Oboli ya weteka no wani kano gambe chama zimaline. Teka ukujia konga lirete de muntu. Nga lirete de nga ye. Nibu wabanga lirete senga liyabantu. Zendo uweza kusekendi duidi nga uyandi badakiriza nga private member. Chahanzi kiliza. Eteka ndi withdraw winze. Nga kachiko kale se uh, report. Teri sobola kola kubanga limanya semateka. Office ya mkule mbeze ya kulilo rudo rufuganya government. Ya teke wawo constitution akawa yiro kinana mu bili e ne kawo obuyinza parliament erabe bweneteeka mu nkola okulondebwa ko mukulembeze ni akawa yiro kan ne ntasayo na mu parliament yali eyogera ku kibina kimu ekidirira obwagizo obunene ku kibina ekiwangu de kakati bobo ko leteeka lyo na no obuyinzo bwawe ba parliament bwali na bulino kola okulonda abantu okusinza ku kibina Echina obu yinza. Elabu e wali batesa mukola eteka elia parliamentary uh, administration act. Mchiku watagano ukuronda umukule mbeze wadu dorufu ganya. Batu nulida chibaita spirit omulamwa wa constitution. Wali guloza kuchibine chidi mubu yinza. Kakati gubobo ya gala okuchusa entambuza yokuronda. Ngoteke mwaba waka wa parliament waba ronda. Osoka kudayoku tereza kawairo ka constitution. Waguru kalioke ka kuobu yinza. Obu tereza mungeli yuna joya gara wansi. Kakati hona rumu ya budali no genda. Okusaba okuchusa kawairo chinana mbili. Ha. Ah, akali mo constitution. Uruva nywafe. Tujeno mpari ya menti. Aliokale te enongo sarizeno jayo gira ku. Chavali no kola. Kati pari mente sobala kuulira. Teka enongo sarizeno jayo gara. Ngata naba kuleta nongo seza. Mukawa ilaka constitution. Akawa buinza parliament. Ukuteka mbeera. Constitution chariye subi. Hmm. Ah. Tuya nziza. Bie bie ondo zambi uli debulonji. Oyogiba ita lop. Uh, Joe Rosenyo. Uh, Tuwa mfuna anga chilao. Nesonga zina jubba kudinda. Ila noza wasaja wakakasiza. Uh, Nerumu jari. E, Ntegete ikatizimu fampa. Uh, Yejusa. Luachi ya linya maza maringwa. Senyo njino mazi mawangu. Hehehehe. <laughs> Awasaja watadeka kazi toka tivaka anka na bukanka ni. Awano njewa mkwatila nebali meredua. Hehehehe.
Aunu tubajina, umanyali tubatuse, mm -hmm. wetuagala, tuongele kuchuninga. Uh, very soon, alina wabakiriza, uh, bila yukanga wena kumamu opposition. Nga fechi mtuchina cha guanya, chikutemu wali, uh, na mpuli lile dembe mu Uganda, na mpuli lile kuwaga, na mpuli lile kula kula na. Uganda tukenda kufi mba uwe. <laughs> Ate, ye, 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 Ngatulina wali prime minister, ngatulina wali e, 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 vice president, ngatulina wali gwe. Hei, yugande gena kubamu dido. Hmm, abafa ba papa, na efe, kuchita bawe, chidja, ni president, chakula chita mulu, but bubu waini, mechimu china chikute mutu, tugenda kunyumiwa, tugenda kubanga, uh, mechimu chita mula bulonji, ilai guanga, yugande gena kwe ya gala bulonji, olu kola be, wama gwe, na uh, hensi ya fe, buwe tuomera. Mbaga la nyume na, uh, muka mawe saba kume, tujakubatu damu, mwela.